Welcome back to the three-hour news show still on See the Stories. And we're going to continue with our discussion with D. Lestari. But before we do, of course, I've got something here so you already know. We're going to play a game and our Game Master is going to be Hans Lang. <laughs> what are you? Game yes. Master. Oh, oh, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for uh, being here and also oh, okay. bringing your books. Are you going to stand or going to No, I'm just going to be okay. here because, right. you know, um, I want to embody your personification of Malaikat Tak Bersayap. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Although I'm cemerlang and rupawan. Cemerlang is the We'll give you that for now. Oh yeah, okay. for now. Just give it to me. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. For the next 10 the minutes. The camera is on. <laughs> All right, so we will play game, the true uh, or false game. So okay. there will be statements that appeared on the plasma. So Kai and Yanni will answer. Then uh, Dee will be the judge of whether the answer is true or false. Okay. Okay. Uh, you so, guys ready? So one of the questions was like, name all 18 books of the <laughs> It's true or false, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's get to the first uh, statement. Okay. Dee Lestari started writing at the age of 15. Is that mm. true or false? I don't know. Because I'm Tana, you know. Mm. I'm going to say true. True for Yanni. Uh, I'm gonna say false. She might have started writing much younger. Okay, oh, false. Because it yes. was not. It was not said what she wrote, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So false uh, for Kai and true for Yanni D. What is? Which one is actually uh, the the right answer? Okay, the winner for the qu first question is Kai. Uh, oh. oh yes. So at what age did you yeah. start to write? I think I my first attempt in writing a novel probably when I was. Nine or ten. No <gasps> way. Writing yeah. a novel at nine. Writing or a ten? novel, yeah. Well, you know, the child's novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. what was it about? It was a it was about a little girl who wanted to have a, a pony, you know. So Aww. I was really much influenced by Enid Blyton. Ah and, you know. So yeah, even yeah. though we, we don't have ponies, <laughs> but that was like my childhood fantasies at that time, I think. But that's valid. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, fiction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get into the uh, next statement. All right. Since she was a child, Dila Stari has envisioned that one day her books will be in bookstores. Yeah. Of course, you have to manifest yeah. it. You know. She got ambitious energy. You know. <laughs> and, are you? A Leo? <laughs> are you? A Leo? So Not what really. is the right answer? Is it true or false? Both are correct. Yeah. True. True. So ever since since the get go, you wanted to be a uh, an author, uh, and you want your books to be in bookstores. I cannot really say that you know author as a profession, mm. but around that time, around that time, you know, 1985 or something, mm. um, I went to the bookstore, and then I told to myself that okay, one day I will see my book mm. on that bookshelf. You know. Now I'm telling you that's the power of <laughs> yes. manifestation. Yes. 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 Right. Well, so yes. you have yeah. to start manifest anything or everything as that young you want. as possible. As young yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. You have to teach your kids that. Yeah. yeah. All Never right. Never underestimate so. your Me silly fantasies. True. Yeah. All right. I agree to that. I absolutely agree to I that absolutely one. Agree. And I can attest to that one. Well, if right. you're not afraid of your dreams, that means you you're not dreaming enough. Yeah. You're yeah. not yeah. dreaming big enough. Right. All right. Yeah. Let's get into the next statement. Dila Stari meditates before writing. Uh, I'm gonna say every true. writing session or just Ooh. before starting a project? I don't know, you guys are not clear enough. Well, before like meditate. a big project, right? I don't know. Mm. Right. I'm gonna say true anyway. Yanni will say true, Kai is saying false. D, what is your habit before okay. writing? Did you meditate on all the writing process? I wish things could go as Yanis answered, <laughs> but, but no. This is, <laughs> this is how it truly and goes. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to mess this up, but I've never met anybody who can meditate every time before, before they do something. Yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I wish, I know there are some people who do, but, yeah, 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 but they're yeah. very, very committed. I don't know, but I just... Yes. But I, I did... A ritual, though, mm. that is something that I always do before writing, yeah. which is writing a gratitude journal. Ah. Because I want to start my my day, my uh -huh. writing, coming from a place of gratefulness. Oh, God. So I always write three things that I'm grateful for every day. 
before I start writing. Oh. So maybe that could be, you know, it's considered as a little meditation. meditation. Yeah, but you know, it's not me sitting with my eyes closed or anything. But, <laughs> but you know, it's but just... that is actually the thing that we often forgot about. Yeah. To to uh, to feel grateful, grateful, grateful. enough yes. of the smallest thing that of we the might achieve. Thing. Yes. 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 Because sometimes if you do it every day. Yes. Mm. Then suddenly it's just you know about oh, I'm grateful for the birds singing. <laughs> I'm grateful for this tree right outside my window. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You started to appreciate small things, and that's really beautiful. It's a beautiful practice, in my opinion. Wow, well, uh, yeah, I agree. That's beautiful. Also, because people meditate differently. Not everyone has the mental capacity to sit down and yes, yes, mm. yes. Well, yes. let alone. I don't. <laughs> Let's not. If you actually live in Jakarta, mm -hmm. you might have uh, feeling you might have been feeling grateful of just um, a clear sky. Yeah. Yes. Like yeah, um, a very a fresh blue air. Sky, yeah, right? like blue sky with with all the clouds. Yeah, yeah. A lot and of people also... are gonna hate me for this, but I'm thankful for rain recently. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, very yeah. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also actually, agree. I, I agree to that. But anyway, thank yep. you so much, Kai and Yanni, to play um, the game. Yeah, thank and you. also, Dee, thank, thank you, you for you. Uh, actually uh, you know, enlightening us with all the things. Now I need to excuse myself. All right. Please, mm. you ladies, continue with your talk. Bye, hi. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Oh, well, so we're going to continue because as Nanny mentioned, we have yes. more questions. Sure. <laughs> Why are we so shy about having more questions? <laughs> but um, uh, actually, I think this is what, what a lot of people tend to ask. You seem to be very firm in terms of your scheduling and you're very consistent. Mm -hmm. But does writer's block ever happen to you? And how do you cope with that? Of course. Okay. There are a lot of myths mm. surrounding writer's block, you know. Sometimes when you just don't feel the vibe, or just mm. oh, maybe today is not the day, mm. you know, I'm not in the mood, and you would call it writer's block. But in my experience of 20 plus something years writing, usually writer's block happen when we have technical issues. But sometimes we don't know how to tackle it. We don't have enough experience to read the situation and how to overcome it. And so we mystified that situation into writer's block. Mm -hmm. So there are two types of, of block. Um, one is, you know, more like a mental block. Mm -hmm. You're not in a mood, you're lazy, you're distracted, you wanna do something else, you're tired, you know. For this type, this is the easiest type. So you just, okay, give yourself a break. Do something, you know, outside of writing. You can watch something. My favorite activity for, for that situation is taking a shower. Mm. Mm. Usually, I don't know how, maybe because the running water, something stuck get yeah. unstuck because of the flow, you know, because creativity is like a flow. Mm -hmm. So you have to let it flow again. Maybe swim, do something, move, move. And then the hardest uh, block is the technical ones. Yeah. Usually something doesn't really work with your logic, with your story's logic. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe, you know, there are things that should be done in different setting, character that should not be in this place yet. It should have been um, further down or before. So those types, um, and sometimes people just write a novel without any plan. Mm -hmm. And in the middle part, usually is the the most vulnerable spots where they get lost you know that's why sometimes we said you know terputus di tengah tengah mm -hmm. like cut in the middle yeah. because the middle part is the most difficult part so in my opinion when I got that block I usually map things out again and then start to um, restructure everything and check my my own planning my own structure and see something that probably doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, it happened to me many, many times. Mm -hmm. So I think the difference between me and the beginners writers, I'm just more experienced in anticipating yeah. that this kind of blocks will happen yeah. and just get used to it. Don't think that it's the end of the world. You don't have to stop mm -hmm. writing at all and just try find a way to overcome it. You know, Because if it's technical, you will work away. Yeah. If it's not technical, then just give it a break and let yourself get back into that after you feel refreshed and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, take a break, that's fine. Yeah. Wait, I have a question. Um, you've read so many books, right? If, so if you could choose one book, what, what, what book would you like to live in? 
<gasps> you asked me, I want to be in the Twilight Saga. Oh, <laughs> so I want to be with <laughs> Bella, <laughs> but you, okay, I want to know, I want to know about you, which book okay. would you like to live in? Oh, I think I would choose my own book because yeah. that's the universe that I'm more familiar of. Mm -hmm. And I think I will choose Supernova because this character is so cool. I, I want to be friends with them, you know, <laughs> and I want to experience what they experience. They travel yeah. to so many places and uh, they experience all these heightened senses and I, I, I want to experience them all. But if I can travel to someone else's universe, yeah. I think I want to be in the in the Lords of the Rings, but <gasps> only only in the elves world. Who <laughs> elves? Okay, I, I I'm, don't want to. I'm a wanna... ringer, so you're just, you're just speaking to me. I don't know. Just just be uh, an elf. What, what's yeah? Just be an elf because. They're, I know. They're, the world's so beautiful. I know, and they're just so graceful. Everything yeah. moves so slowly. I know right. I know they're recording it in the back because there's so many ringers in the studio. <laughs> really? And I want to know, what's their skincare routine? You know? Ah, like, yeah. Their, their hair routine. Why their hair looks so nice? Like, why, don't, why don't they sweat? <laughs> You know? That's so I'm true. so curious. Uh, me, me, me too. But, but you know, um, I, I read a very interesting quote um, recently. Is that when you were younger, you wish you'd be elves. But the uh, older we get, we more we mature. We realize we're all just dwarves and want to. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were going to say orcs. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> orcs is but like the uh, I, I will, I will take the effort to elf. stay an elf for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, this is good to know. I'm really happy that there is a fellow Tolkien fan yes. here. Wait, wait. So no, no Twilighters in the building. Oh, I'm come on. Sorry. Come on. I'm sorry. I know Hans. Guys. I know Hans is definitely. It was it a guilty pleasure of yours? <laughs> he, he would be the wolf, right? Anyway, because I think the they most the most adventurous thing they do is play baseball. <laughs> oh, it? But that, but that scene was, was pretty it, cool. Was it baseball? Yeah, it, it is pretty cool. It is pretty was, cool. Yeah, but, but the book was very different In though. The elves, they travel to you know, all this I and know. that. And we have no idea where they come from. <laughs> And we have no idea where they go after they yeah. decide to retire and live forever. You know, so many it's mysteries. very mysterious. <laughs> and Mighty, thank you so much for coming. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you so we much. We had so much fun, yeah, and yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. so much, and all the success for your anthology. And wait, 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 wait. We heard yes. that you actually uh, gave a teaser in the anthology that uh -huh. you are going to write a sequel from one of your previous series. Yes. Without saying too much. It's okay. When, it's can it's already already it's already when can we out? When can we expect your nineteenth book? Do you think? I'm gonna start writing in January, so Ooh. hopefully it'll um, be released in 2025 if I could get it on time. But she works fast. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, I've been I've been so lazy the past one year, you know. But I I, I did have a lot of things actually. I, I created a single album and and other many other projects but you know in terms of writing i feel like that is that is my core you know so i need to go back to my core and i will start in january ah. yes ah, well thank right. you so much for coming thank and you. we're really excited for, for what's next yes and it's too bad that we didn't get to your thing but okay <laughs> see the stories will continue after the break with dr utini lamsari to talk about transforming healthcare education through illustration and extended reality technologies thank you